Hello and welcome, I'm Johnny and you want to set up Tailwind with SvelteKit. Tailwind is the CSS framework that's been making implementing designs more fun by keeping your styling right in your templating and simplifying things like media queries. And SvelteKit is the meta framework for Svelte, which has been making frontend more fun by keeping your HTML, CSS and JavaScript looking like HTML, CSS and JavaScript. Feel free to argue my oversimplifications in the comments. The point is, there are two frameworks I love. Let's put them together. Let's create a new SvelteKit project with pnpm in it, svelte.next, your project name here. npm and yarn would work the same, so use them if you wish and go through the wizard according to taste. I'm going with the Skeleton app, TypeScript, ESLint and Prettier. We can CD into the project, pnpm install our dependencies and start our server with pnpm dev. And now we can visit localhost 3000 to find our app looks like this. Sweet, not even a style reset, so let's keep the only sensible overrides in our pretty RC and bring in Tailwind. Let's install our dev dependencies for this, Tailwind CSS itself, PostCSS, which will be running Tailwind for us, and AutoPrefixer, the other thing PostCSS will be running our CSS through. It's time for npx tailwind CSS init. This will create a tailwind config.js for us, which will immediately change to end with .cjs. The way the SvelteKit tooling works, we need the extension to specify it's a C for common JS module, or it won't be able to execute it correctly. So tailwind config cjs, this is where we need to specify that our content where we'll be using Tailwind classes, is going to be any file under the source directory which ends with HTML, CSS or Svelte. Let's now create a postcss config cjs again, where we'll be specifying postcss needs to run our CSS through two plugins, Tailwind and AutoPrefixer. We are ready to create a tailwind.css file where we'll include the Tailwind directives. An app CSS file where we'll import Tailwind CSS. And finally, a routes underscore underscore layout dot svelte, which will magically wrap all our pages with the code we'll put inside. Let's add a slot within a main tag to get our UI back and a script TypeScript tag where we'll import our app CSS. All right, if we hard restart our server and refresh, we see we've successfully applied Tailwind's pre-flight reset and we can start adding Tailwind classes and rapidly prototype our UI. Tailwind with SvelteKit, integration complete. If you're wondering why a separate Tailwind CSS file, it's true we could have added the Tailwind directives straight in app CSS, but I like keeping my Tailwind magic separate, so if we wanted to do something like compose a card class by applying a railroad of Tailwind utility classes, I'd do it here so we can have just the one place where people can look up all our made up composed classes. That said, we are blitzing through stuff here, but we won't really pass this straight to a paragraph. We'd have a card component to nest our stuff inside. And even though if we inspect the DOM, the class railroad looks nuts, while the compose class looks nice and clean, it's not actually more efficient after gzip comes into play. And given naming things is one of the two hardest things in software engineering, I'd rather not compose any classes, create reusable components instead, which I would have done anyway, and live with the railroad. But hey, let's go back to our Tailwind config for some milder takes some of my common overrides. I am always explicit with my color palette, I add some handy utility colors, the set of gray I'm gonna use, and the primary and secondary palette of my app. That way, if your designer goes, oh, we're gonna call our brand color ruby, not rose, you just node and change nothing. And if they actually change the palette to gold or whatever, you change it in this place only not all over the codebase. Changing the font family is another classic, fonts help tremendously in establishing brand identity, and I will sometimes use the plugins option for Tailwind typography, which, by the way, supports Tailwind's easy dark mode now. That's one last option worth mentioning, dark mode class. 
even though I personally never use it. I favor more robust theming with CSS variables, but I do get that's a lot of boilerplate to set up. With Tailwind Dark Mode, all you need is to start prefixing classes with Dark. Drop a comment if you wanna see us implement theming with CSS variables. It'd be an approach inspired by the awesome GUI challenges, and it'd probably make our config look something like this, and our app CSS like this. CSS vars for days! Or maybe you wanna see something else. Let me know. Until then, thanks a bunch for watching.